folks, 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 why do you keep buying first? We're going to talk about that and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for week ending February 21st, 2024. Lots of you have subscribed to this channel. Thank you so much for that. But there's many of you that watch every single week. You enjoy the content and you've not yet subscribed. Consider subscribing. So, I don't know why buyers and sellers keep doing this. People that are selling, have a property to sell and a property to buy, why you choose to buy first? I get phone calls every month or so of somebody who got themselves into so much trouble because they purchase first instead of selling first. Recently, with our buyer client, we went to go see a property. Now, the property had an offer date scheduled for a few days. We went to go see the property. It was somewhat suitable for my client, and he's thinking about whether we should participate in offer night. I'm doing my research so I could properly report to my client, and part of that is calling the listing agent and finding out some details. And the listing agent was pretty optimistic as to how offer night would work out. And the expectations, I got to tell you, between him and their seller, I, you know, I don't know where it, it stems from, but between him and the seller, the expectations were quite high. I spoke to my, to my client, the buyer, about the situation, and although the property was somewhat suitable, my client decided to, we're gonna sit this one out and kinda wait and see what happens for offer night. Plus, we weren't ready to go anywhere near the peak where the seller thought they would be. So offer night comes, I receive an email, there's an offer registered, it's offer night, of course there's an offer registered, or there should be, right? That's the only email I received about an offer being registered. So they've received one offer as far as I can tell. Later on that evening, we receive another email saying property is sold conditional. So think about this. It's offer night. Expectations are high. You expect a bunch of offers. One offer comes in. On top of expecting lots of offers, as a seller, in most cases on offer night, you're expecting to be sold firm without any conditions. Well, it's offer night. One offer and the property gets sold conditional. Okay, that's starting to happen more and more actually. So the next morning, I receive another email saying, property is no longer sold conditional, it is available for sale. And shortly after that email comes in, I get a phone call and it's the agent calling me. Basically, he's making his rounds now to everybody who showed the property to try to drum up some interest to get the property sold. So he calls me and I profit from the opportunity and I say, buddy, what happened? You had an offer night. I, I only saw one update as far as offers. He goes, yeah, we had the one offer. My client accepted, which is the seller, accepted a conditional offer. And this morning they received a phone call from the, the buyer's agent saying buyers changed their mind. I guess overnight slept on it, buyer's remorse and changed their mind. They no longer want the property. Uh, I'm not going to get into the legal aspect of the buyer not paying the deposit after accepting an agreement. I'm not, that's not what this, this conversation is about. But the agent is speaking to me saying, look, Santo, if your client is interested, my client is open-minded. And I said, you know, just two days ago, your expectations were here. One of the reasons we didn't participate is that we didn't see the value and we thought, why? Why are we going to go when we're like way down here? And, and my client was no longer interested in this property, um, but I'm having this conversation with the listing agent. And he says, well, my client's expectations have changed. They're now here. And I said, wow, that's a, you know, a big change in just a few days. What's prompted? It's only been three or four days from here to here. And the listing agent says, my client has purchased and he needs this sale in order to close on what he bought. And it's just a short period of time, but he's pretty nervous and wants to sell. He has to sell. 
the listing agent shouldn't be telling me that. But he did. Now I know this information. And so I have a conversation with my client now. That's besides the point. The point is of this conversation I'm having with you now is why would that seller buy first and then put themselves in this situation because now they risk not selling. Well, we know they're not going to sell it where they thought they were going to sell. And now there's a chance, depending on how their finances are, they get themselves in the trouble. And the fact that they went from here to here quickly in just a few days that are not holding out, it, it tells me that they're nervous about this sale. Why people get themselves into this predicament, I don't understand. Look, every seller who, or every, let me say every person, because you're a seller and a buyer, every person who is, has a home and they're moving into, they want to buy another home and they absolutely need the money from their current home to buy the next home you're always asking yourself at the start of the process, do we sell first? Do we buy first? Every person goes through that conversation, whether it's between themselves, whether it's with their mortgage person, whether it's with their realtor, but that's a conversation. It's a thought process that absolutely needs to be had. If you're one of these people, few people that have a ton of money in the bank and you could buy another home, and you could close on it, and it doesn't matter whether you've sold your current home or not, then do what you like. It, it, this conversation doesn't really pertain to you. But to the majority of people out there, to the majority of homeowners, that if you were to make a move, you absolutely need the money from your current home, the equity there, in order to close on the next one. You really, it doesn't matter what the market situation is, you really should be focused on selling first, in most cases, selling first and then buying. Knowing what your home has sold for, doing the math to know what's going to be in your pocket after all selling expenses, knowing what you get, and then you have your budget to buy. You're going out shopping with not having that guaranteed money. That's the scary part. And so many people get themselves into that situation. Now, the market, I'm telling you, is very unpredictable. If you've watched the show just for a few weeks, you've heard me talking about very recently how lots of offer nights, lots of properties being offered for sale with an, a, a, a pricing strategy where there's an offer night. You've heard me talk about there's been, you know, five, 10, 15 offers on properties and it's changed. It's you've also heard me saying, yeah, things are turning around now. And in different pockets across the GTA, you're experiencing different things. You're experiencing different markets on the same street within a week. We've seen properties listed where the first weekend there's 20 showings. It's busy, there's lots of activity, property gets sold right away. And the same street, just one week later, a similar property, a similar price point gets listed and there's three or four showings. And it's sitting there and nobody's putting an offer on that property. How do you explain that? Sometimes you just can't and that's the market we're in. It's in transition, buyers have ideas in their head. They, they, it's it's the, the human factor. They hear a news update about interest rates and they act one way. Then they hear another news update and, and they act a different way. And sellers get caught in the middle of all this. And so to be safe, sell first. That's the moral of the story. Sell first, know what you're getting, then buy. That is the safer way to go. Stop getting yourself into trouble. If you think this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. And if you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Up here, there's a link. 
in the video in the description below this video there's a link to my calendar click on that book a time that's convenient for you and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind now let's get into the numbers Folks, we have a great home for sale by Lansdowne and Queen, great neighborhood. Check out the video at the end of this video. The market, if I had to describe the market right now, I would say it's totally unpredictable. It's, it can go this way, that way, and sometimes one week to the next, it does go this way and that way. Let's get into the numbers here. Here's a quick summary. This is for uh, all the different home types for the city of Toronto. I got detached up here, then semis and towns, then condos. Condos, although we're not talking about condos in this show, that's tomorrow's show, just condos. I put it on the chart to show the difference. 722,000 is the average condo, condo apartment price for the city of Toronto. The detached average price is 1,640,000. There's a $918,000 difference between the average condo price and the average detached price. $918,000. Let's get started. We're going to start with the detached market. This, again, is just for the city of Toronto. 132 detached properties were sold for week ending February 21. The previous week, same number, 132. The week before that, almost the same number at 129. So sales for the last week have been flat, hasn't changed. Prior to that, they were increasing on a weekly basis, which is what we would kind of expect over this time of the year, outside of the new year, going into towards the spring market, we expect sales to go up. That was happening, they're flat now, unpredictable. The amount of property selling at $2 million or more. That, however, has been steadily increasing. For last week, 33 detached properties sold at $2 million or more. That's helped push the average sold price higher versus the previous week to $1,640,000. 1640 is 4% lower than where we were this time a year ago for detached average prices. Now, if we look back to the beginning of this year, we were 3% higher for average sold price, 4% higher, 4% higher. We were pretty consistent with 3 or 4% higher. Since the end of January, we are now 3 and 4% lower consistently over the last year's prices at this time. The median price is just, it's basically rounded it's 0%, no change versus last year, but I do have an arrow pointing down. That's because it's like, you know, negative 0.3 or 0.4 lower than what it was a year ago, but rounded at 0%. But if you look at the dotted line, the four week moving average, it's pretty clear that median price and average price have been trending up over the last few weeks for this year anyways. 132 were sold. Less than half, 44% sold at list price or more. And for the last three weeks, we have been hovering around 50%, 44%. So it's kind of there between 40 and 50. Listings, we started the year listing fewer than what we were listing a year ago. But since after January 31st, since February, we've been listing far more, I would say, than what we were listing this time a year ago. Active listings were trending down. Now they're trending up. Months of inventory, very consistent at 1.6 months of inventory. You're kind of in the middle of a seller's market when you're looking at 1.6 months of inventory. And that's pretty low. And that helps to understand why prices are trending up. Even the average days on market has gone from 30s to mid 20s to now 16 is the average days on market. That's all the city of Toronto. Let's look at the city broken down into nine sections. So we say months of inventory is 1.6 and there's some neighborhoods even lower. We go over here, Etobicoke, 
more than a third sold at list price or more. One is the months of inventory. One month of inventory. Weston Yorkdale, 1.1 months of inventory. Scarborough. So Scarborough continues to be one of the most competitive markets across the GTA, sitting at 1.1 months of inventory, the same that it was a week ago. And 57% of those properties are selling at list price or more. Scarborough, very competitive. Let's look at semis. 31 semi-detached properties were sold, which is down from, we gotta go like right to the beginning of the year to find to find a uh, where we were beating. But you know, 37, 38, 39, 43 semis were being sold each week. We're now at 31 semis sold for week ending February 21. 11 of those were at $1.5 million or more, but average sold price climbing strong to 1,000,000. 349,000. 1349 is 9% lower than where we were a year ago. The median price of 1.2 million is 13% lower than where we were a year ago. And it looks like those prices are trending up, both median and average price. 61% of the semis sold at list price or more. That market is very competitive. Months of inventory did climb a bit, now sitting at 1.3, still extremely low. 1.3 months of inventory is pretty much a seller's market. Townhomes, only 12, these are freehold townhomes, only 12 were sold, more than the previous week, still 12 is not a lot. 12 were sold, one of those was at $1.5 million or more. Of those 12, the average price is 1135000 1135 is a 22% lower than where we were this time a year ago. Folks, be careful about looking too deep into the, the townhouse numbers that I'm putting up here. I'm just saying the sampling is not that large, so prices can go up down very, very quickly depending on which townhomes are being bought and sold. The median price of those 12 is a million and 96. Months of inventory sitting at 1.8 and 58% of those townhouses sold at list price or more. So it's 58 of 12, it's what, seven, I think. Here's an average, here's the, the summary of the months of inventory except for condos, which are sitting in a balanced market. And the condo, we're talking about condos in tomorrow's show, but for the freehold market, detached semis and towns, you're pretty much in a seller's market. Those of you that still have buyer's market kind of ringing in your brain, I put it up here, I crossed it off. I don't think you're experiencing a buyer's market in too many parts of the GTA, if any, and if you're looking to buy a detached in the city of Toronto or a semi, probably not. You're probably experiencing more of a seller's market. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily it's an aggressive seller's market. It really depends on the, the property itself and the price point, but pretty much a seller's market around the GTA. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Folks, you're about to see the inside of 115 Lansdowne Avenue. Great location, just north of Queen Street. And you're gonna notice a bunch of modern updates, yet the home maintains its original charm. Have a look.